do. He's a specimen under my microscope. I know all the faults, and this is what I've concluded. I love him. I love his quirks. I don't especially love his money management skills. I made a vow for richer or poorer, but I didn't million but I didn't marry a millionaire tycoon. He's stubborn, but he's my blockhead. When he fills the gas tank in ten dollar increments, I just want to scream. He commonly crafts conversations into a sale, always a new idea or a venture he wants me to buy. Maybe he forgets that I was sold on him twenty four years ago when I said I do. His idiosyncrasies are only temporary annoyances. What I love most about him is his loyalty and his patience. Wouldn't four psychiatric hospitalizations and three recurrences of cancer, let's make that four, be enough for any man to leave? He's still here. It's a simple, annoying aspect that cement our love. In marriages, there's tears and frustration and not so pretty moments our love grows. In those not so pretty moments, our love grows. I don't understand why you refuse to see how tenderly he cares for us. Just one more. I can find it quickly. I had it ready, but. Okay, this is about my father. I'm going to beat up both my parents today. Mm -hmm. It's called Daddy and Me. Let's be crystal clear. You abandoned me. You betrayed me. I was stamped rejected, sent down the chute where all the unloved and broken things go. It's unimaginable that you didn't fight. You signed your parental rights away and just stepped aside. I was four. My world was topsy-turvy. Turvy. I, seriously, I was dizzy. I scouted, the, I scouted the skies. I looked for you in strangers' faces. I couldn't find you. But you found my mom when she was single again. Were you there to reunite with my mom or see me? My memories are fuzzy, but you were there for a nanosecond. You bought me a Smurfette stuffed animal. Another time we sat in the theater watching Dirty Harry and the Christmas Story. We were so disconnected. You were a wall I could never climb over. There was not a hug or a simple I love you. One memory remains undimmed. You said you moved to Florida. But I was standing at the O'Neill's jewelry counter and I saw you cascading down the elevator. You lied to me, just another cut in a wound still fresh. No, you were never my Superman. Woo! Thank you, Kara. All right, before we go to the not recorded version of the open mic, I wanted to mention over here on this little round table, uh, there are some things that I have made by hand. There is little octopi, um, and then there's bracelets of various kinds. Inside the door, um, to the, on the left side when you first walk in, there are writing nights t-shirts that Azrael will gladly sell you. Woo! Azrael, how much are they today? Seven dollars for all attendees. Yep. And Usually twelve. of course 12. we will be taking uh, money and or books um, from all of you as soon as the show concludes so that we can, you know, pay performers and all of that. So, the, there was one name on the uh, unrecorded open mic Wait, list. the best time to write. Oh, the best time to write is... Wow. Now! The best person now. to write is... You. you! The best place to write is... Here! <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh,